Luffy's new bounty is going to shake the very foundation of the One Piece world as we know it. For pretty much the entirety of the series, bounties have essentially been to pirates while ranks are to marines. What are intended to be publications for the sake of incentivizing the detainment and or demise of certain individuals have in essence become a rite of passage and badge of honor for the sea's most notorious criminals. The amounts listed for the most part serve to be a scale of capability, potential, and the overall danger they may pose to the intended rhetoric of the world government. In fact, on more than one occasion throughout the series, we have been made privy to Marine debriefings in which the topic of pirate bounties have been major. Previous bounty changes and associated feats. Over the span of his relatively brief pirating career, Monkey D. Luffy has seen a number of remarkable changes to his bounty, all of which being substantiated by some pretty remarkable strides. In the case of his very first bounty, Luffy was valued at 30 million belly, and this was on account of his relative domination of the East Blue, having taken down pirating figures such as Buggy the Clown, Don Krieg, and Arlong. Their bounties at the time being 15 million, 17 million, and 20 million respectfully. Now, in the grand scheme of things, Luffy's original bounty of 30 million doesn't sound like all too much. However, it is important to recall that contextually, the average bounty of pirates in the East Blue is 3 million. Therefore, in theory, making Luffy 10 times as dangerous. And even more than that, Luffy possessing a bounty of 30 million from the very beginning was considered to be unprecedented. And that's disregarding the fact that Arlong's bounty as a Grand Line pirate should have been even higher had his activities not been withheld by the ever corrupt Captain of the Marines, Nizumi. That being said, this was from chapter 96 of the story, and obviously a whole lot has happened since then. Which brings us to perhaps an even more remarkable first bounty in the case of Charlotte Linlin, better known as Big Mom, who at the young age of five years old received a bounty of 50 million in the wake of her hungry rampage against the giant denizens of Elbath. Yet even still, to have racked up such a bounty in only the East Blue is pretty impressive. The most notable reaction to this bounty being the fact that Mihawk took it upon himself to deliver the message to Shanks personally, considering the pirate had once told him the story of the boy. And this was the moment that Shanks learned that Luffy had finally made his move and entered the pirate world. There is also the tidbit from Luffy's hometown of Fusha Village reacting to it, which is closed out rather interestingly by its mayor questioning if Luffy becoming a pirate was his dream or his destiny, which all things considered, has become Become something plenty of people have begun to question themselves as well. The truth of which we cover in our video on the previous Gumu Gumu no Mi users, so check that one out if you're curious. But from here, things would only get crazier. Luffy's second bounty would see him skyrocket by over three times, up to 100 million belly, which was on account of him defeating Crocodile, one of the seven warlords of the sea, who possessed a frozen bounty of 81 million, a feat which served to undermine the entire warlord system. The seven warlords of the sea were once a deterrent against pirates in what was essentially a tactic of fighting fire with fire. Crocodile was the first warlord to fall thanks to Luffy, but certainly would not be the last. Now, the reaction to this bounty increase would be pretty different, but certainly interesting all the same. On Jaya Island, Luffy and Zoro would be largely underestimated by Bellamy and his crew on account of their bounties, which were low compared to Bellamy's especially high starting bounty of 55 million belly, which saw him be dubbed the big time rookie in Mock Town. As a reminder, Big Mom at five years old had a bounty of 50 million, so yeah, these things are not always the best indicators of strength and or prowess, as notoriety can certainly go a long way, which is to say it pays to do things in the public eye. Because as expressed by Bellamy's crew when they questioned the validity of Luffy's updated bounty of 100 million, they had never even heard about him or his crew. To have obtained such a high bounty typically required the enactment of some pretty heinous deeds, yet they had heard nothing at all. And the reason they hadn't heard of anything was because Luffy's actions were just that detrimental to the public perception of the world government and one of the three great powers. Not to mention the heroic narrative to be found in a pirate liberating a kingdom from the villainous clutches of a pirate endorsed and afforded special privileges by the world government. Yet without even knowing him, the hefty price tag on his head was enough to place fear in the hearts of many. And when Bellamy tested the validity of Luffy's bounty, he was flattered. This rising star of a pirate placed at 55 million belly was taken down in a single punch. This rise in Luffy's bounty would be recognized by Buggy who comically sought revenge, as well as by his brother Ace who found himself aboard Buggy's ship. But even more pressing would be the attention of the five elders. After all, the sanctity of the three great powers had been jeopardized and the void left behind by Crocodile needed to be filled. The threat of Luffy could no longer be ignored, but this would only be the beginning of their troubles against Luffy. And speaking of trouble, after realizing the boy's bounty to be especially high, Blackbeard decided to hunt him down for the sake of making a name for himself. And this declaration of his would actually be how Luffy and Zoro 
even found out about their bounty increases. Luffy's third bounty increase would place him at 300 million belly. This was three times his previous on account of his defeat of the world government secret group of assassins known as CP9, which included the greatest talent in the organization's history, Rob Lucci. During which time, he declared war against the world government and led to the complete and utter annihilation of the judicial island and its lobby. He survived a buster call and managed to escape their clutches along with Nico Robin, the sole survivor of Ohara and reader of the Poneglyphs, the very woman the Revolutionary Army had been searching over a decade for whom they regard to be the light of revolution. This bounty of his would only go on to further enthuse those of his hometown who are also oh proud of his accomplishments. It's one thing to live your dream, and another to excel with it as Luffy has. This would also guard the attention of the world's worst criminal, leader of the revolutionary army, and his father, Monkey D. Dragon. Not to mention Blackbeard would be even more enthused to pursue Luffy in hopes of presenting him as a gift to the world government, further spurring on Ace in his desire to stop the man which ultimately led to his own capture which would reverberate throughout the world. And prior to his recognition of these particular events, something rather fascinating would occur. Luffy and company would find themselves on Thriller Bark which was the territory of one of the seven warlords of the sea, Gekko Moria, and miraculously Luffy managed to take Moria down as well, Moria who possessed a bounty frozen at 320 million belly. Now this was a major feat that no doubt deserved to see Luffy's bounty increase even more so. However, as expressed before, Luffy's antics served to expose a degree of fragility in regards to the Seven Warlord system, which negatively reflected the capabilities of the world government. And so, it was for this reason that the Five Elders specifically dispatched yet another member of the Seven Warlords to eliminate not only Luffy, and not even just his crew, but any and all potential witnesses to the defeat of Moria. Thankfully, they all managed to survive as Kuma had some agenda of his own to fulfill, but this feat of Luffy's would go unknown and therefore would not contribute to his bounty, again expressing the importance of public perception in regards to bounties. Luffy's fourth bounty would be the least dramatic increase, yet would receive an impressive degree of attention considering the sheer volume of staggering news at the time. And Hordy Jones of Fishman Island would be the one to break the news to him that his head was now worth 400 million belly, a casual little bump post time skip on account of Luffy's participation in the Summit War of Marine Ford. To even participate in this major event, Luffy managed to liberate the most secure prison state in the world, Impel Down, becoming the second man in history to ever do such a thing, but certainly in even greater fashion as he broke out along with 241 prisoners in what was hardly a calculated manner. Not to mention his brotherly connection to Ace would be revealed along with the fact that Vice Admiral Garp is his grandfather, Monkey D Dragon is his father, and he possesses Conqueror's Hockey. He initially managed to ally himself with a former Warlord of the Sea by way of Jinbei and work alongside the former first mate of the King of the Pirates, Goldie Roger, the Dark King, Silver's Rayleigh. And to close things out, he even rang the Ox Bell a total of 16 times, which was considered to be a declaration of war by the Marines, a feat which required him to make his way back onto Navy territory and be photographed by hordes of reporters from a multitude of different countries, meaning witnesses galore. Luffy's transgressions had placed the five elders in a rather difficult position yet again. The Warlord system was on the verge of collapse, and they feared not only the boys' questionable connections to Rayleigh, but also the sudden notoriety of the D Clan in recent years. Luffy's message would also be interpreted in another way by his fellow pirates such as Captain Kidd, as they considered it to be a marking of Whitebeard's era being over and the commencement of his own. After all, of all the big name rookies, Luffy had solidified himself to be in a league of his own. Luffy's fifth bounty would see him rise by the very same increment as the previous one, taking him up to 500 million belly. This was on account of him taking down Caesar Clown at Punk Hazard, followed by the toppling of the heavenly Yaksha, Don Quixote do Flamingo, yet another member of the Seven Warlord system. Luffy also managed to ally himself with the Hard Pirates and their captain, Trafalgar de Law, a former member of the Seven Warlords, which is to say that Luffy at this point had defeated three of them and worked alongside five of them to varying extents, pretty much just walking all over this so called great power. Now, the reaction to this increase would be encapsulated by way of the Dex of the World 500 Million Man Arc, which was a series of manga chapter cover pages that provided glimpses into the reactions of our various extended cast members. These would be for the entirety of the crew, but for Luffy in particular, Chapter 806 would have the expected Jubilee of Fusha Village, Chapter 815 would see Vivi of Arabasta, Chapter 818 would have Sabo, Koala, and Dragon, Chapter 830 would have Rayleigh as he gambled, Chapter 831 would have Rayleigh showing off Luffy's wanted poster to the massive animals he had trained against Orushukaina as they cried tears of joy at the face of their boss. Chapter 834 would see Boa Hancock and the entire island of women celebrating Luffy's accomplishments, and finally, with Chapter 838, Shanks would take a good look at it as he raised the paper high to the sky as Dove flew away. After all, Shanks
which was attending a wedding at the time. Now Luffy's sixth bounty was by far the most drastic jump yet, as Luffy's value tripled like it had after he took down CP9, going from 500 million belly to 1.5 billion belly. This was on account of Luffy invading Whole Cake Island, the primary base of operations for one of the four Yonko, Big Mom, wherein he fought against and personally beat two of her crew suite commanders, Cracker and Katakuri, valued at 800 million and 1 billion belly respectfully. And that was on top of the whole assassination plot thing that saw him team up with Germa 66, the Sun Pirates, and the Fire Tank Pirates on top of continuing his long-lasting alliance with the Heart Pirates. Oh, and he also now possesses the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, a a collection of seven pirate crews with a combined bounty of at least over 4.1 billion belly that all swore fealty to him. His brotherly relationship with Sabo, the man second in command of the Revolutionary Army, would also be known as well. And the flowery speech to accompany this information would be provided by none other than the likes of Cavendish of the Beautiful Pirate and Bartolomeo of the Bartow Club, both of which being members of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. And of course, by now we all know how powerful narrative can be. Now, this bounty increase, on top of being the most drastic change change ever seen throughout the entirety of the story was also one that was observed by the entire world, and that's because it marked the arrival of the fifth emperor of the sea. Luffy was now officially a Yonko, which guarded the particular intrigue of the other four Yonko. Kaido, who had a bone to pick with the guy for disrupting the production of his smile fruits, Blackbeard, who considered Luffy unfit for the position, although Blackbeard underestimating Luffy isn't anything new, as that is exactly what he did back when they first met, Big Mom, who would be infuriated by the notion of her defeat, while Shanks considered this to mean that he and Luffy would finally be meeting soon. What just happened in Wano? So after taking the world by storm in all the ways he had previously, Luffy and his crew made their way to the ever isolated land of Wano, a location that even the world government dares not to challenge, what is also the territory of the Beast Pirates, one of the most infamous crews in the history of pirate kind led by the Yonko Kaido, a man revered to be the world's strongest creature. This is a crew made up of an estimated 20,000 members, 500 of which possess the powers of artificial devil fruits, making this the crew with the most devil fruit users in the world. A crew that not only managed to subjugate the Wano Shogunate, but also absorbed three crews of those known to be the worst generation, the Drake Pirates, the On Air Pirates, and the Hawkins Pirates, with a combined bounty of at least 11.1 .1 billion belly. Simply referring to them as strong would be a major understatement. Oh, and lest we forget, this already absurdly powerful force would only go on to ally itself with the Big Mom Pirates, a pairing that would see a jaw-dropping combined bounty of 21.3 billion belly. An alliance which the Marines proposed to be the birth of the most dangerous pirate crew in the world. And after winning this war for Wano is the very power that Luffy will have managed to defeat without the use of his entire fleet. He will have done so with his core crewmates, the samurai forces he had so charismatically managed to have serve him, his long-standing ally in the form of Law and his heart pirates, as well as his newfound allies in the form of Captain Yusuke's kid and his kid pirates. What was a largely outnumbered force with a comparatively minuscule combined bounty of roughly four 4.3 billion belly, the likes of which will be continued to be led by Luffy's close friend Momonosuke, the heir to the Wano throne, son of Kozuki Odin, the once commander under Whitebeard and later crewmate of the Pirate King, the boy turned man who also bears a draconic visage akin to the immensely intimidating Kaido. The accolades to be found in Luffy's accomplishments here are downright staggering, and that is all without the fact that he has now successfully awakened his devil fruit marking him to be the second coming of Joy Boy, the warrior of liberation with the power of the sun god Nika, a deity revered to be the abolisher of enslavement and the greatest enemy of the world government, the realization of said power believed by the five elders to lead to an especially dangerous potential future, one feared to such an extent that they would gladly risk incurring the wrath of Kaido along with the expense of a CP0 agent to avoid it. And after Luffy's mind-boggling display in front of everyone, both friend and foe alike, especially that of Kaido, the ever Joy Boy obsessed figure himself it will be especially difficult to bottle this development up. The news of Luffy defeating Kaido and toppling his regime in Wano will be told to the whole world and be taken in a similar manner to the death of Whitebeard. Hey guys, it's Yusuf from Anime Balls Deep and yes, I'm here to tell you guys that the defeat of the Beast Pirates is monumental. 
of the old Kaido is the first to fall right after the legendary white bed. Obviously these two events aren't really comparable as what happened in Marine Ford will go down as one of the best arcs in history but with Kaido's defeat it marks the change in tides and Luffy will fill more than just the gaps that's needed. In fact Luffy greatly parallels Blackbeard where kind of in a weird way they are two sides of the same coin. And just as Blackbeard took his spot so will Luffy where this event will bring Luffy's bounty to be over 6 billion. Yes maybe that's a stretch but listen. Before in the case with Big Mom, Big News Morgan exaggerated Luffy's feet and even with that his bounty went to 1.5 billion. On top of that Luffy was labelled the 5th Emperor of the Sea. So after actually beating a Yonko, it's only fair for Luffy to receive a bounty over the 4.2 billion range. The people of the world will only expect such numbers. Luffy's recognition and name as a newbie has shifted entirely, putting him to the top. Like even after the time skip, we saw how notorious the Straw Hats pirate's name had become, to the point where pretending to be them was power in itself. Luffy in just a few years has created a public perception of himself and his crew being akin to Whitebeard of the past. They were able to take Fishman Island away from Big Mom which was once under the protection of Whitebeard. They freed Dressrosa from Doffy garnering such reputation that the people made statues of the Straw Hats to show their gratitude. Now Wano a country that has such tremendous value due to the production of sea stones and weapons and whatnot. And as plot armor mentioned earlier Luffy defeating Kaido isn't the only thing that happened in Wano. Rather, Luffy awakened the legendary Nika model Hitohito no Mi, which the world government was afraid of for centuries. After Shanks revealed that Luffy is the pirate who possessed this fruit, the five elders didn't waste time in order to execute him. However, as we all saw, that execution just helped trigger the very fear that they were all trying to avoid. So Luffy's bounty after Wano isn't simply a rise of a new Yonko, rather Luffy is the biggest threat to the world government since the ancient kingdom. If Robin received an 80 million bounty as a child just because she could unlock the mysteries of the ancient kingdom and read the poneglyph, imagine what the world government thinks of Luffy. They are literally shitting bricks. I wouldn't be surprised if Luffy's bounty shoots up to 4 billion and above with the extra 2 billion being added just due to the fear the government has of Luffy's awakened fruit. In chapter 576, Whitebeard even called it out, saying the world government fears the great war, which is about to come. This hit a huge nerve to send Goku. A prophecy about this is likely known within the inner circle and the attention of Imusama will also be brought forwards, where Imusama might personally build a force to take down the Straw Hats, likely Rob Lucci and his goons, we most definitely will see another round between the two. But this brings us back to the public perception. The key thing here is that even though the government will dish out the bounty, Luffy's title of Yonko and even Pirate King will be down to how the world will perceive him. If you guys remember, Goldie Roger title of Pirate King was given to him. He did not seek it nor did he claim it. This is very similar to how Luffy became the leader of his grand fleet without him intending for it. And just like that, the world once they hear of Luffy's feet and the fear of the world government, they will recognize Luffy as someone special. The knowledge of him being Joy Boy and the sun god Nika will spread and every corner of the world that had the remnants of this legend will once again light a spark of hope. But most importantly, news will reach other major powers in the sea, specifically the remaining Yonkos from Shanks to Blackbeard. Shanks will undoubtedly be happy and prepare for the time Luffy will come to him. In fact, he probably sees the future ahead. In Blackbeard's case, after hearing the news of what went down in Wano, will probably want to target the Straw Hats, likely after he apprehends the Red Hair Pirates. Regardless of the reactions, Luffy for sure after defeating Kaido, the one who has the highest bounty amongst the others, will shoot him up the ladder. And I wouldn't be surprised 
surprised if we see numbers from the 5 to 6 billion range. Luffy's new bounty. All things considered, we believe that Luffy, to follow these events, will emerge from this conflict going from the Yonko with the lowest bounty to being the Yonko with the highest bounty. Throughout the history of One Piece, Luffy's bounty has always risen beyond those of the pirates he has thwarted along his journey. And in emerging victorious against Kaido, Luffy again, as a Yonko with the lowest bounty, will have triumphed over the Yonko with the highest bounty set at about 4.6 billion belly. That is more than three times Luffy's current bounty. However, as we have of course come to realize, Luffy is no stranger to tripling his bounty at all, having done it on two occasions already. And even more than that if you count his rise from 30 million to 100 million. That being said, we wouldn't be as foolhardy as to presume he would manage to eclipse the 5 billion, 564 million, 800 thousand belly bounty of Goldie Roger just yet as he isn't the king of the pirates for now. The highest Luffy has risen beyond a directly related triumph has been 443 million belly thanks to the feat of Katakuri. And if we apply those very numbers to our baseline of Kaido's 4.6 billion belly bounty, we end up with roughly 5 billion belly. Therefore fittingly making Luffy, the new joy boy, the most wanted criminal alive. And if he is able to top the late Whitebeard's 5 billion, 46 million belly bounty, then he will also be the closest man to the King of the Pirates, with the second highest bounty in the history of piracy. And considering the fact that he is Joy Boy, it would not surprise us if his wanted poster, like Sanji's once did, comes to possess a special designation. Yet unlike how Sanji specifically denoted a desire for him to be taken alive, Luffy's may very well only call for his death, which is oh so exciting. Luffy and crew are going to be hunted down like never before, or at least that is the innate thinking. However, it's not like many are foolish enough to hunt down the other Yonko. It may very well be more likely that the world government would need to withdraw their pursuit for a time, resigning from the hunt until the final war to decide it all, but we'll just have to wait and see. And something else we're likely to see to follow such a bounty would be the reunion of Luffy and Shanks. When Luffy became a Yonko, Shanks said it's almost time. Their promise was a rather vague one, to meet when Luffy became a great pirate, and by all accounts he has been a great pirate for a very long time. But to be the most wanted man alive, now that is a feat that supersedes that of Shanks and is the definition of great. The marines may attempt to bar such a meeting of the two as they had tried to in the past between Whitebeard and Shanks, but we all know how pointless that ended up being. A great pirate contextually in my mind is just a step down from being the king of the pirates, as if that was to be the stipulation of their convenience, then that's what would have been said in the past. And we all know that Luffy finally meeting Shanks will just break the internet all over again. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku, thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day, I love you.